A month ago, the University of Tennessee at Knoxville took down a post from their website suggesting the use of gender-neutral pronouns. The issues UTK has faced have been considered on ETSU's campus as well. The new gender-neutral pronouns, they're not really all that new. This idea of gender-neutral pronouns has been around for over 100 years. The specific terms UTK is referencing, I first heard about 20 years ago from my professor who'd heard about it, I don't know how many years before. So it's not that new of a thing, and a lot of ways it's sort of handy. Well, what did you, whatever your physician told you, you should do what he, well, her, we, we don't have another, a, a good pronoun for captures. I don't know if it's male or female. So in a lot of ways, it's more convenient, but people are really slow to adapt to that change. It's so ingrained in our language. The recent talks of gender neutral pronouns has spread to ETSU's LGBTQ campus organization, Heroes. And then it's something that we've been talking about a little bit as well within our group. Um, in the past semester, we've actually rewritten our entire uh, group's constitution to being entirely gender neutral to encompass everybody or anybody. It's something that we've talked about separate to what's going on at UTK. As the incident that happened with UTK showed, a change from tradition is not easy for some. I believe it was a good uh, thing to do, but I think that they kind of went about it in the wrong way because they really wanted to make up some really strange words that nobody could really understand, like starting with Z's and, and everything. And it would just really muddy things up and make things more complicated when I think it would just be a lot easier to uh, ask that person, like, what do you want to go by? Instead of generalizing a whole section of terms for one person. People feel uncomfortable with change. And also people feel uncomfortable with change if they feel that if they are to stumble with words, they'll be accused of discrimination, which is really not the case. The suggestion made by UTK for the use of gender neutral pronouns said, you know, if you're not sure, you ask. That was the whole basis was, if you're not sure, ask. And so this is not that if you stumble with it, you're going to be accused of being discriminatory or intolerant or hateful. The topic of gender neutral pronouns is a sensitive issue on college campuses. We are here uh, to create a safe space for anybody on any uh, gender spectrum or any spectrum of sexuality, whether they're gay, whether they're straight, transgender, or cisgender, which is uh, prescribed at birth. Um, we're open to everybody, and all are included, and it's that kind of support that is needed on these campuses. I mean, universities need to embrace the viewpoints of those who are conservative and those who are liberal both, because universities are about a place to become familiar with new ideas and maybe something that might make you feel uncomfortable, but part of education is becoming exposed to new ideas. Whether you choose to accept them or not, it's about a place to be exposed to something new and consider alternatives. Gender neutral pronouns are one solution to addressing non-binary individuals. I think one thing that is going on in the world, um, in this part of the world, is that there are some gender identities that might not be as conventional um, with certain people and the way they've been raised. Um, and that's not a bad thing, it's just different. So the issue of gender pronouns are important to those for whom the traditional labels of he and she and him or her don't really apply. And so if you were born in a body that we recognize as male, but you never really identify with that, you want a pronoun that reflects sort of who you feel you are. People should like, you know, start looking like outside a gender binary than, you know, just, you know, Either you're a him or a her, which, you know, makes me feel weird because, you know, it's like people think I don't exist. <laughs> we the people. I mean, you know, that, that doesn't leave anybody out. When we start talking about all men are created equal, it starts to, and so we start to realize this. There's this negative attribution to the notion of being political, politically correct, that there are rules you have to follow, and if you don't follow them, then you're a bad person for breaking them. And I tell people often, don't worry about being politically correct, just worry about being polite. For the East Tennessean, I'm Katie Parks.